a non-lactobacillus-dominated uterine microbiome lowers implantation and pregnancy rates. The human microbiome plays a significant role in determining the health status of every human body, and in fact, bacterial communities coexist in mutualistic symbiotic relationships with the host. WIPS originally defined the term microbiome as a characteristic microbial community occupying a reasonably well-defined habitat, which has distinct physiochemical properties. Bacterial cells in the human body account for 1 to 3% of total body weight and are at least equal in number to human cells. Today, this definition is enriched by a dynamic consideration of microbial activities that result in ecological niches. Specifically, how the microbiome interacts with the host to maintain a healthy environment. Variations in the microbiome's composition can lead to dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in the microbiome, particularly in stress conditions, where the rapid decrease of microbial diversity promotes the expansion of specific bacteria or pathogens. A genital lactobacillus-dominated flora plays a pivotal role in determining fertility and, in particular, Lactobacillus crispatus. Lactobacilli dominate the microbial community and are commonly associated with a healthy genital status. Lactobacilli produce lactic acid and protect the vagina by maintaining a low pH that is prohibitive to the growth of most pathogenic bacteria. The presence of pathogens in the genital tract, such as Chlamydia trachomatis, Gardnerella vaginalis, which is often associated with bacterial vaginosis, urea plasma species, and gram-negatively stained microorganisms, can adversely affect fertility. A non-lactobacillus-dominated microbiome was shown to be associated with dysbiosis. This imbalance has a negative impact on implantation rates in procedures such as IVF and may also be responsible for habitual abortions. A complex interaction of the lactobacillus species plays a pivotal role in the equilibrium of the normal vaginal flora, and in particular, appropriate levels of lactobacillus crispatus are involved as a protective factor against asymptomatic bacterial vaginosis, which is mostly caused by uroplasma and Gardnerella vaginalis, both of which are potential impairing factors in infertility. The presence in the cervical flora of gram-negative bacteria, such as Chlamydia trachomatis and Gardnerella vaginalis, and the lack of lactobacillus is closely linked with the inability to conceive. The importance of lactobacillus, specifically lactobacillus crispatus, is linked to its ability to synthesize lactic acid. Estrogen, specifically estradiol, controls lactic acid production, and this contributes to the acidic vaginal environment, usually with a pH around 3 to 4.6. This acidic environment is just right for lactobacillus bacteria, helping them to grow, multiply, and dominate the cervicovaginal niche. Additionally, lactic acid is considered a healthy vaginal microbiome marker, mainly because its mild acid pH shift makes the cervicovaginal environment unsuitable for pathogenic bacterial colonization. And to kill off other bacteria and help prevent vaginal colonization by pathogens, Lactobacillus crispatus also synthesizes hydrogen peroxide and bacteriosins. These are proteins that further contribute to maintaining a healthy genitourinary status. In one study, catheters were used to assess the presence of cervical microorganisms and their impact on IVF outcomes. Out of 279 embryo transfers, cultures were positive for pathogenic bacteria in about 143 cases, which is roughly 51%. The most common pathogen found was E. coli, making up 64%, and Streptococcus species about 8%. Now, even though the data on patients, the IVF procedure, and embryo quality were similar in both the normal group and the group with pathogenic bacteria, the clinical and ongoing pregnancy rates, as well as implantation rates, were significantly lower in the group with positive pathogenic bacteria cultures compared to the negative or normal culture group. For example, clinical pregnancy at six weeks was 37% in the normal culture group versus 24% in the positive culture group. Ongoing pregnancy at 12 weeks was 28% in the normal culture group. 
versus 17% in the positive culture group, and implantation rates were 16% in the normal culture group versus 8% in the positive culture group. In another prospective study, when bacterial communities from paired endometrial fluid, that's the lining of the uterus, and vaginal aspirate samples within the same subjects were examined, different bacterial communities were detected between the uterine cavity and the vagina in some subjects. The women were divided into two groups, those with a lactobacillus-dominant microbiota, meaning over 90% lactobacillus species, versus those with a non-lactobacillus-dominated microbiota, which was less than 90% lactobacillus with more than 10% of other bacterial species. The presence of a non-lactobacillus-dominated microbiota in a receptive endometrium was associated with significant decreases in implantation. 60.7% in the lactobacillus-dominant group versus 23.1% in the non-lactobacillus-dominant group. Pregnancy rates? 70.6% in the lactobacillus-dominant group versus 33.3% in non-lactobacillus-dominant group. Ongoing pregnancy? 58.8% in the lactobacillus dominant group versus 13.3% in the non lactobacillus dominant group, and live birth rates 58.8% in the lactobacillus dominant group versus 6.7% in the non lactobacillus dominant group. These results really demonstrate that the existence of a lactobacillus-dominated endometrial microbiome is highly stable and promotes healthy implantation and pregnancy. Alternatively, pathological modification of the microbiome is associated with very poor reproductive outcomes.